Right, hello everybody and welcome again to another live session. I know, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been live here and that's because obviously things have been very, very, very busy here. I've been painting a wolf um, video tutorial for my website, which is, uh, as you probably know, it's devonartist.co.uk. Now, what I'm going to show you today, what I'm going to work on is working on this leaf completely live. I've not planned any of this just yet. I'm kind of trying to plan it as I'm talking to you. That's how I sometimes tend to work. Um, so stay tuned and I'm going to try and paint some of this leaf with you while I'm live today and we'll see how we get on working with the different colour mixes that I've got within my mixing palette here. Okay, so as I say stay tuned and let's see how we get on with it. Right, okay here goes. As you can see it just made a start working out where things are. I just got the wrong photograph up then. So I'm working from a tablet which I tend to work on a regular basis. And that's how I tend to it. Anyway, say hello, by the way. Just say, hi, I'm here. And uh, I'd like to kind of know who you are and where you're from. So if you can let me know, that'd be brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. And let me know you can hear me and see me okay as well, because that's obviously, that's obviously very, very important, because otherwise, why am I here? <laughs> okay. Now, I just want to just very lightly put in some of the, some of the finer lines just so I can, I've got some mapping out work really. I just want to work out where things are going to go beyond this uh, this little butterfly here. So I just want to map it out first of all and just add some little tiny lines in there just to kind of give me a bit of a guide really. So it's really just more or less planning things out which is the way I tend to work. Um, uh, that comes down to around the bottom there and it comes all the way up there as it does and we've got another one on this side as well I can just about make out my pencil marks as well from underneath don't need that just yet now of all paintings I always do some testing out first even if it's something I'm familiar with painting from painting say for example I don't know Robin or something like that so I always do a lot of colour testing for, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour or so before I start. Just so I've got some ideas on the colours I'll be using, you know, while I'm doing the painting itself. So it's always wise to do that. Just kind of work on, work out the colours first on some scrap watercolour paper. Preferably the same kind of paper that you're going to be doing the main painting on as well. Okay, so I think that's some of the lines in there. Okay, Erin, hello there, my name is Erin Wimple from Holland. Hello, love butterflies. Thank you very much indeed, Erin. It's very good of you to join me today, all the way from Holland as well. I'm here in Devon, North Devon in the UK. That's where I tend to, well, that's where I live. <laughs> so I'm all the way over here. So thank you for joining me. So as I say, anybody who wants to say hello, let me know where you're from, because that'd be quite interesting to find out. Because I know a lot of us at the moment are kind of stuck to the internet and working out where, you know, what we're going to do each day. I know, I know, I know. I realise that, but we've got to keep smiling. That's a way forward. It really is, it really is. Now I'm going to lift off some paint, and that's all I'm doing here using a damp, clean brush. So keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and then lift with some clean tissue. It's not that clean. But you can see the green I've just lifted off there. See that? So that's what I'm trying to achieve through doing this. I'll tell you what I might do in a minute. I'll try and see if I can zoom in that a little bit more for you. Just so you can see more of the painting as well. So I'm not sure what you can see on the screen. Oh yeah, you can just see the edge of the palette there, can't you? So if I can move that over yonder, give me a minute, and I'll be back with you. Just while I'm here. Let's move things around my table here for you a minute so you can just see what I'm working on. Right, you stay there. Stay. Oh boy, hold on. Now the colour I'm using is that one there. Now the mixture of the colour in question, by the way, out of interest, these are my testings which I do. So this, these are the colours which I've got for this particular painting. Let's pick up some paper on the floor. Um, so these are the kind of colours I've been using throughout the painting so far. So there's quite a few, well, quite a variety of colours really, isn't there? So you've got the background colours, which includes leaf green as well, believe it or not. You can just see that in the background there. And you've got the leaf colours, which are just going to be these here. But I may add to these colours as I go along. 
But this is what I mean, if you do a lot of testing out first of all, before you start the painting, then at least that way you've got some general idea on the kind of colours you're going to use. And there's also less chance of making a mistake of some form. Okay, now the greens I'm looking at roughly, as a quick test on these, is leaf green, hooker's green, burnt umber, sap green with a mixture of burnt umber as well. And you can see the variation that I'll get through using those colours. Now this little stripe here is one I was testing out before uh, on one of the previous uh, live videos for this paper white butterfly on how to use watercolour white as well and the different kind of consistencies of that watercolour white. So if you need to know about that again, let me know, post a comment down below. Oh, that rhymed, didn't it? Okay, let me know and post a comment down below. Ha, ah, okay, right, back to it, Paul. So I want to carry on lifting off a little bit more now. So, uh, so very gently using the tip of the brush. So every time I do a little bit, I'll go back and I'll wash that brush out. And the reason why I tend to wash the brush out is because effectively all you're doing is just transferring paint from here to the next area. So you've got to keep washing that out. Just, just quickly dip it in the water and give it a quick, a quick kind of swirl around your water pot and you'll be fine and you can start again. And you can see the effect just by doing that, just by taking off a little bit of paint. So I'm the kind of person that likes to kind of remove paint more than, well, put, you've got to put the paint on in the first place, but more than use watercolour white, which I do use quite a lot. But if I can lift the paint off as well, then that can work quite nicely. And it's a little bit more subtle compared to using white paint. But with white paint itself, so that's okay. You know, you can use white paint as long as when you do use it, that you don't make it too bright for those dull areas because it can look a little bit too artificial when that happens. It really can. Now, before I do this, I'm going to work over that way. Let's move that out of the way in a minute. See so what I'll do. I'll just quickly zoom in that a little bit more. One second. Is that a bit better for you? Say yes, Paul. Okay. Now, as I said, let me know you can hear me okay. All right, because I've got no idea. I think you can, because I did do a little test before I went live just now. So if you can hear my voice, don't turn the volume down, please. Thank you very much indeed. So again, lifting off just around the top there, using the tissue and pulling off, as you can see here on the tissue, that little bit of green. and just down the bottom here as well. Now I'm going to stay live for probably around 45 minutes to an hour today. So if you want to make a cup of coffee, now's your chance. <laughs> so you can sit and relax and just spend some time, you know, with me on here today if you want to, I don't mind. Now I've been I've not been live. I was going to go live a couple of weeks ago after doing the butterfly, the second part of the butterfly. But the reason why I didn't is because I've been working on quite a involved uh, video tutorial for my devonartist.co.uk website. It's up in the corner there, you can see it, I know, for my website. And that's going to be next month's video lesson on my site and also on Patreon as well. So uh, yeah, that took a lot of editing and working out on the video as well as obviously the painting side of it, as well as the video editing side of it. So that's why I've not come on for a couple of weeks, because I need to crack on and get that done. Because obviously my members on Patreon, my members on my own website, all come first, as you can appreciate, I'm sure. So very lightly, just touching the, the leaf down the bottom. Now these lines are actually thinner as well and a little bit more down there okay and uh, just I'm trying to see where these go actually because these are quite fine down here and I might use a little bit of white later on but when you look at the the colors that are within there we've actually got some more yellow in there as well so the yellow one about using something like the Gambo yellow, which is one, the one I used earlier on uh, when I first did this on part two, I think it was. So I'll be using that one in order to kind of look at the details 
I'm trying to kind of bring it out a little bit more in the colour, which is the way it's going to be with this. I want this leaf to be quite colourful. So as I say, lifting off as we go along, using the very tip of the brush, and keep going, keep going, keep going. And the more you keep going with that, the more paint you'll lift off the painting itself. And then all the way down, lift it, keep washing that brush out. And as I mentioned, you'll see all the lifting off you've done on your kitchen roll that you've got in your hand here. So that's how much I've taken off already, I know. It's quite a lot, isn't it? So we're nearly there now, just on this little section. The thing with a leaf as well, there's so much detail, so much shine within a leaf. And we're going to work on one section at a time. So I think what we'll probably do initially is work on this section here. And once that section is all kind of just starting to dry, we'll start working on another section instead. And then give that chance to dry and then what we can do once it's nice and dry and start going over the top of that area with a little bit more detail okay now i think we've got to get some color mixed up now the color in question as i mentioned is going to be gambo yellow and i've got an old 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 and kind of acrylic mixing brush or it's an old acrylic brush i used to do acrylic paint from years ago as you can see here in fact even the paint's worn off the handle okay so that's what i tend to use when i do my mixing work and the mixing itself is going to be, as I mentioned, Gambo Yellow. Oh, I didn't mention, did I? You know, I tend to use um, mostly half pans. I do use tube paints as well, but the most of the time I tend to use half pan paints. And the ones in question, just give us some general idea of what I work with, are those there, okay? So there's your half pans. The paints, if you want to know what they are, post a question down below, and I'll let you know the materials I use. It's not a problem at all, I don't mind. So just ask if you need to know, as you're more than welcome to find out. So that's Gambo Yellow, within that. And when we go back to our colour mix, our testing chart, which we had before, I was just showing that one before, we can use a little bit of Hooker's Green in there, and probably even a little bit of Burn Tumbra as well. But in this one, we've already got, which is this one here, look, we've already got a little bit of Hooker's Green and Leaf Green in there, so I might utilise that at the same time. So, let's go even brighter on there, shall we? And to do this, I'm gonna go for a size five brush, which is this one here. And there's a, a old, I say old, it's nearly, I don't know if it's quite a while, this one. So size five, it's one by Rosemary & Co, which I use, I don't get paid by them, so don't worry. And this is quite a nice sable brush as well. So what we're gonna do is wet this through, first of all, just by lightly tickling the paper we're going to work, as I mentioned, on one section at a time. And you know, it doesn't matter if you touch the legs on this little butterfly because we can kind of redefine those afterwards as well. Let's go and reshape them. Lift paint off, remember, if need be. Okay, and a little bit more down there. Now, one thing I like to do as well, re-wet that paper because if you re-wet the paper, it's going to stay wetter longer. All right, so it's going to stay that it's going to stay wetter longer, and because of that, it gives you a bit more working time. So wet it two or three times. I know some of my members say to me, Paul, you keep saying two or three times. I know I do. Something which I do on a regular basis, but I do that because I wanted people to remember to do it two or three times. I want that. I don't want them rushing a painting because they're fighting that drying time. And we did that when I worked on the background as well. You know, when I did that, um, I think I did that one off camera because of the time it takes to dry. But wetted that two or three times. So allow it to soak in. You don't want it running down the, the paper like a waterfall, okay? Right, who else have we got on there just while that's drying in a little bit? Okay, Deborah. Hello, Deborah. How are you today? Deborah Kale on the Sawyer. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much indeed. And <laughs> Erin Wimple. Thank you. Loud and clear. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, the time here, by the way, if anyone's interested, is 5.32. There you go. 5.32. And in the afternoon, obviously. not Definitely not in the morning. Okay. I'm going to let that dry in a little bit. So definitely not in the morning. So 5.32. I tend to paint all day. And uh, I'm editing most days and painting most days. So, uh, but that's how I do. That's how I tend to work with my website as well. How long have we been on for? Okay, so we've been on for about 15 minutes. I'm going to give it another 10 minutes and I'm going to just have a quick coffee break for about literally two minutes, if that. So, and I'll be back with you in a bit, okay? 
So, uh, but for now, we'll just carry on. And okay, that's ready. There we go. You ready? I'll just bring in the lemon yellow. No, it wasn't. Gambo yellow. <laughs> I'm going to drop this in first of all. What am I like? I don't know. So, gambo yellow. Drop it into that damp paper. See, it's not running away with me. I want to be able to control this. We are in control. You know that. You're in charge of that watercolor. Don't let it control you. It's true, though, isn't it? It's very true. Now, this yellow will really brighten this paper up as well. I want this leaf to come really bright. Now, I know this is quite pale down. I'll tell you what I might do. So I'm just going to wash that brush out in a minute. And just lift off some of that paint I just put on there. I don't want it too much down there. And also, the same will apply. What I mean? Be careful, these little hairs on this leg on this butterfly. And these are shaved, isn't it? And I'm going to lift off using the damp, clean brush. Just like that. Because, in a while, once we've got all the details on all of these, we will find we'll need to add some highlights on there as well. Okay? Now for that mixture, which we've got in there. Leaf green, hooker's green. And that's going to go on the very top of this leaf for now. Go over the legs a bit if you need to, I'm not too worried about that. And then down the side, just there as well. So I'm just going to lift off that little bit of paint there. Just splattered, that's better. So all the way down the side, I'm going to carry on now. I can't hold the palette at the same time. And then, again, control the paint. Get a damp, clean brush. You heard me washing the brush out there, hopefully, just off camera. A damp, clean brush, and then lift off some of the paint on this side. What we're trying to create is a curve. Just a gentle suggestion of a curve. It's not really curved like that, but it's got a gentle curve going over the top. And to do that, we just need to make sure that um, you know we've got the uh, the overall shape within there. Now this is going to be a little bit more. It's got a tiny amount of burnt umber in now. Tiny amount. We'll neaten this up in a bit when we start adding the details in there. And, of course, we can lift off more paint as well to bring out those little lines we start working off to begin with. Wash your brush out. And then, very lightly, give it a tickle and blend it down into the leaf. Not like that, just like that. There you go. <laughs> and give it a tickle down the bottom there. Right, okay. Now, that's one part just kind of the first wash, well, the second wash of colour really on there, just to create a bit of a curve. We need to do this little section here, but I'm not going to do that straight away. I want this to dry off first, and we'll let this dry naturally. I could use a hairdryer, but um, I do have one, by the way. If anybody's seen me and they say, what, 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 have, you, what have you got a hairdryer for? Um, Kojak rings the bell. But anyway, if I, I could dry it, but I'm going to leave it to dry so I can work on a separate section instead. So I'm going to work on this one down here now. Or could even do that little area down there. Okay, so we're going to work on that little bit. Okay, let's have a quick look. Oh, and by the way, the water pot which I use here, da -da -da, dirty one side, clean on the other, and that's how I tend to work. So it's a, a kind of split water pot. You can use two jam jars, anything like that will be fine. Okay, you ready? Let's do this section now. If you find it's difficult to control because you've got a larger brush, go for a smaller brush. This is size 5. You can just go for a size 1, size 2, anything like that will do. Now the good thing about this particular brush is because it um, holds a lot of water but it's also a short bristled brush. Okay, Try saying that when we've had a few drinks. It's a short <laughs> A short bristled brush and because of that as you can see there look it's not very long is it because of that that gives me much more control when I'm working on a painting as I mentioned these are I'm gonna say their name again aren't I who, who these uh, brushes belong to who I'll get them from should I say it is Rosemary and Co so do a YouTube or Google search more than anything really rosemaryandco.co.uk 
and uh, this is the series 93 the one I'm using today so I'll show you that one okay let me go over it again just very lightly very lightly give it a tickle okay and let it soak in okay now the question of the day if anybody's just joined me today is where are you from where are you watching from now we've already got um, we've already got Holland which is brilliant so that's good to know and um, that's Erin which is a uh, Holland Erin Wimple hello again so where are you from let me know are you stuck indoors is it raining outside are you painting if so what are you painting at the moment because I do find that very interesting to know that as well because it's um, one of those things that we all love to do so the lemon yellow no it's not it's gambo yellow the reason why I say that is because the lemon yellow is my main yellow color I just feel that the gambo yellow which is this one here look a little bit richer in colors you can see compared to the lemon yellow which is that one and that's why I like to use occasionally use a gambo yellow so a little bit more on this side now so what I might do I can just about see the area behind that'll do so I'll pop this yellow in down to the bottom here now I'm trying to keep an eye up where the highlights will be now I know a lot of artists who do botanical painting will reserve the white of the paper now I I'm different to that I, I tend to paint my way we know a song about that don't we I'm not gonna sing it no I'm not and because I tend to paint my own way of painting um, which I've done for oh heck I'm trying to think now that's 40 nearly 41 years now I've been painting for and just the way I paint so I enjoy painting and I think my way is not that's another song the way I tend to paint is not possibly the right way but then again you know what is the right way I suppose the right way is the way that you feel comfortable painting and as long as you test yourself and you try different things out as well which is very very important that you do that the right way is your way okay it's the way that you enjoy painting the most <laughs> I know I know people will probably put a comment down below below and say Paul you can't say that well I can and it's just the way I tend to think okay right now then working with this little bit of hawker's green um, the leaf green and the burnt umber it's going to add this into this leaf area again See how that's drying now drying quite dull isn't it got a nice color to it uh, Canada hello Charlene 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 that's Charlene Charlene I hope I pronounced it right I do apologize if I don't hello from Canada thank you very much indeed now, I've got the computer right by the side of me here so I can just quick every now and then I'll give it a quick glance I've gone to YouTube live many many times but um, I do enjoy doing it actually so you got me live today I wonder what time it is over there what's it what time is it in Holland by the way and what time is it in Canada let me know is it early is it late is it time for tea <laughs> right so that's that one on there now I'm gonna work I think because I've got the line between these two areas here just about I'm gonna start working on this one here I think then when that one and that one's dry I can then work on that one I don't want them to bleed one into the other so I'm going to add this into here first and then once this is on I'll start adding some detail on this one I can carry on with the rest of these off camera if need be because there's no point in doing them all because it's a bit boring otherwise for you to watch because I do think about you you know I do care so again wet the area just like we've been doing all the way down just the very bottom or the top depends which way you look at it and allow that water to soak into the paper okay now the paper I'm using today shall I tell you no I'm not gonna tell you no 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 yes of course I will the paper I'm using today is from Bockingford there's Bockingford 140 pound GSM 
OK. Bockingford 140 pound GSM. And the one I tend to use is a block pad. And I'll show you one in a minute. So I've got another one by the well nearby. I'll have to quickly reach and grab it for you. So this is that Gambo yellow going on again. Now the consistency of the paint within my mixing palette, this is a ceramic mixing palette by the way. Um, I tend to use ceramic because the water tends to, when it dries, it dries flat. As you can see, about, obviously my board's on an angle there, which is why it's welded there. My board, my table is probably that kind of angle, which I work on. It saves your back, you know, so rather than painting flat. Um, yeah, so that's one layer roughly. But because it dries nice and flat and not in a bubble of water, you find it will give us some ideas on what it will look like with numerous colours, you know, layers of that colour will give you something like this. See the idea? And that's what you find throughout the palette as well. You know, like the alizarin crimson, what it's like with one colour and then numerous versions of that same colour, numerous layers of that same colour. So it's just well worth just bearing that in mind because it's just um, worth, it's handy having a ceramic palette by the way, it really is for that reason rather than plastic. Been there, done that, I just don't get on with plastic palettes, it's not my thing. I do use them for using for acrylic, uh, not acrylic, sorry. oh yeah, for acrylic occasionally, but I do use them for applying masking fluid, which I tend to put a little bit of the masking fluid within the plastic palette, which is what I did with this one to begin with, uh, so I don't waste it. And, um, and obviously from there on, all I need to do is just uh, dip my little old, old, old masking fluid brush into it, because it does, they, it does ruin your brushes masking fluid or drawing gum. Drawing gum is another one, isn't it? Same thing. Okay, so working down to there. Now I'm going to go for that darker colour again, with that burnt umber mixed into it. Just a little bit. I just want to create that kind of bit more of a shape. You see the differences it's making already, you know, from when we first started earlier on. Well, which was 27 minutes ago. There you go. Oh, what we got? <laughs> Jolene, 10.41am, uh, wow, okay, so it's very early for you. And Erin, so oh, 20 to 7, there you go. And it's now quarter to 6 here, here in the UK. So quarter to 6. I don't know, amazing really when you think about it, isn't it? I have to think about these things. When I put a video on onto my website, you know, Devon Artist, or onto Patreon, whichever one, then I also have to think about the times, just mop that up in a little bit, which I put those videos on because so I've got to make sure people are awake. <laughs> but it's a bit difficult because when you've got people from different parts of the, of the world, I've got somebody from China, for example, and you know, for, that's another different time zone again. I've got people from Holland, yes, I have, as well, and from Canada, yes, I know, um, on my website. Um, so you find people on there like that as well who join my Facebook page as well. I've got a special Facebook group at the same time. Now then, I'm going to show you that palette, or I should say the pad. So bear with me a minute while I do a lot of stretching around my room here and moving furniture around so I can get to it for you. So, uh, let's put me over there. Okay. Good job I've got a clips on microphone, isn't it? Eh? Now then, if I zoom out a little bit on the computer first so you can just see this, so bear with me a minute. I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, where are we? Lost it. Lost it years ago, you know. Now, this is a one. Da -da -da. Who left that picture there? So, this is the one in question, which I'm working on. There you go, let's get rid of that in a minute. And it's a Bockingford block. Okay? And the size is 310 millimeter by 230 millimeter. So, if you're in inches, it's 12 by 9 inches. Okay, it's 140 pound. It's a CP not white. And if you don't know what that means, uh, all that means is cold pressed, not. Now I class that the easy way I tend to remember it is that it's not hot pressed. So when the paper goes through the mill and goes into the pulp stage, it then goes through the rollers to create the paper, you know, the really squished down flat paper. So that means it's not gone through hot rollers. Got the idea? If it's HP, that means it's hot pressed, it's gone through hot rollers. Now this particular pad. I'll just take out that grey insert a minute, one second. It's lovely and white, which is nice. It's glued, I don't know if I can show you this, it's glued all the way around. Is that better? So this is all glued all the way around there. 
Now, that's all the way around the pad, other than, one second, I'm going to get a guitar pick. Why do I need that? I don't play a guitar, by the way. Other than, right, I'm trying to find this. Bear with me, I can't see it on the camera there, one sec. Just there, look, there's a little gap. Can you see that? So that little gap there allows you to slide in either a palette knife, nice and flat though, so you don't damage the paper underneath. Or, in this case, I've got some guitar picks for doing it. Um, and they cost pennies to buy, you know, so. And then that slides all the way around, I won't do it. And then that will take off that sheet of paper once you finish the painting. Now the benefit for using the block pad, let's put that away now, is that with the block pads, they are brilliant for um, keeping the paper nice and flat. So if you're adding lots and lots of washes and water on there, and you know your paper buckles, so it cockles, okay, so a lot of cockling, um, what will happen then is that on pre if you're not stretched your paper, for example, for one, it can very often dry, undulated, and cockled, you know. But if you're using a block pad, then it's pretty good, and it will very often dry and nice and flat, which is why I tend to use one. There you go, that's a little bit about the paper which I use. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Right, okay, let's get a bit closer again. Oi, oh, there we go, hey. Okay. Right, who else we got there? So, uh, Charlene, hello. I realise watching this, I tend to rush my paintings. So anxious to see the end result. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's all, all about being patient, it really is. If you feel like rushing, stop. Just stop for five minutes. And you find that if you do that, then you'll um, kind of nice, kind of calm yourself down. Go on, make, make a drink. I always make, make a drink and put the kettle on, you know. And I find that's probably best. I'm just going to put this one in a minute. So make a drink, pop the kettle on. Polly, pop the kettle. No, that's that's a sink. No, I can't sing that one. So put the kettle on and then come back with fresh eyes. And that way you can very often see. I don't think I'll let this soak in because it's only a small area. You can very often see if there's any little mistakes or happy accidents. As, as you know, Bob Ross, the uh, oil painter, the late oil painter, brilliant. I think I've watched every one of his episodes in the past. And he always used to say, that we don't have mistakes, we have happy accidents. Which is very true, isn't it? Very, very true. Now, um, yeah, so just take yourself away if you feel like you're rushing a painting anyway at the end of the day. Because you don't want to rush a painting. It's not, you know, it's not right. It's not right. Because you want to try and spend as much time on it as you can. And never try and say to yourself, I don't do this at all. You know, even when I'm doing my videos for, for uh, my website for Patreon, then I tend not to say to myself, I've got to get this done by the end of the day. No, don't. Don't try and do that. Because that way you're not putting all your efforts in to try and get it really, really nice. Because you're just trying to rush it at the end just to get it out of the way. So you can actually put a frame on it and say, I did that. <laughs> or oh, it's finished yay okay so you can see what I'm saying though all right now then okay now before I do anything else I'm gonna have a quick drink of coffee I'm gonna do exactly what I've just been preaching and just to say I'm gonna have literally two two and a half minutes away but for that two and a half minutes I'm gonna show you a little video which I just put together and it's only about my website okay so if you don't mind just putting up with that for a couple of minutes, I think that'll be fine. I won't be long. I'll be back straight after it finishes. And if you've got any questions you want to ask, have them prepared for me. All right? Anything that I do, the materials I use, you know most of them already by now. Um, any methods I use and all the brushes, which I tend to use as well. So you're welcome to ask all those questions while you're here today. And while, I'm, well, while you've got me live, actually, haven't you? Oh, and if you're watching this on Catch Up, don't worry. Still post a question, I'll still get the email from YouTube to kind of say that somebody's asked a question. <laughs> All right, okay, so one second, I'll be back literally in about, mm, about two and a half minutes. See you in the moment. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. Now let me show you some clips from my main watercolour video on how to paint a very stunning looking swan. Let's get started.
and this one video will be about three and a half hours long. And I'm going to guide you right from the beginning all the way through to the very end on how to paint this very beautiful looking swan. And of course I'll be talking all the way through so you won't miss a trick. I'll tell you all about the colours I'm going to use, the paper, everything that's needed, including the reference photograph and even the outline drawing. So come along to www.devonartist.co.uk and let's get them brushes wet. Right, well, there you go. That wasn't too bad, was it? Now, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Right, back to it. Now, uh, while I've been off camera, I have been drinking a, a coffee here at the same time. But I've also, at the same time, I tend to multitask. I'm one of these men that can multitask, you know, a little bit. Don't tell anybody I said that, all right? I can, a little bit. I did say a little bit. <laughs> Okay, now you can see the shape already coming together from this leaf. So it's already starting to come together. This is now where we start to add the detail over the top. Now to do that, I'm gonna to go to my little tiny, tiny, eensy weensy little yellow, do yellow polka dot bikini brush, which is a very tiny little brush, this one here. Uh, and it's double zero in the size, or two zeros. Windsor & Newton, Cotsman Series 111. Um, well, it's a round handle, uh, yeah, okay. It's a short handle uh, brush as well, which is what I like about this. Now these are synthetic bristle brushes. That's, yeah, bristle, yeah, that's difficult to say sometimes. So these are synthetic bristle brushes, <laughs> uh, which are really good at It gives me a little bit more control on the paper itself. Now, I'm gonna start thinking about some of the details, working on this top section. So I'm just gonna move the palette out of the way so I can just get my hand in here. Um, looking at the reference photograph, which I haven't got on the screen. Oh, yes, I have. There you go. I'm going to go for that mixture of the leaf green with the hooker's green, just initially. And I want this more to a, probably to a milky consistency. Now, I tend to work on more than one consistency. I tend to work on watery, as if it's just come straight out of the tap. Okay, or faucet, depends on where you are, I know. So watery, milky, creamy, and thick, okay? So when it's watery, as I say, it's just as if it's just come out of the tap, so it's literally that, that's how loose it can be. When it's milky, like this one here, you find it just runs right down the palette, but it takes its time a little bit going down there. When it's creamy, now that's a different kettle of fish, it really is. What about they say kettle of fish? I've got no idea. Now creamy, it must be a, one of our sayings over here. That doesn't go anywhere. There you go, it's not even running. See the idea? And obviously thick is straight out of a tube um, to give us some general idea of what I mean by those uh, different consistencies. And I go all through that with my, obviously my videos as you know. So Now when I'm adding these little veins in initially, I want to think about roughly the shapes I can see. I'm not trying to copy them exact because they're all going to be different anyway, aren't they? So initially what I'm going to do is use a shaky hand. I know, you've got to use a shaky hand. Don't overload the brush. So don't put too much paint on. Just means you've got to keep reloading it on a more regular basis. And start adding some texture to that leaf. Or well, in this case, to this section of the leaf. And if we need to brighten it, we can do. If we need to, we've got to lift off a little bit more paint off there again, I know that. If we need to uh, add more detail, we can easily do that. If we need to lift paint off, we can do that. So very carefully, working my way down to you, babe. We know a song about that as well, don't we? <laughs> All the way down. And you can see just with one layer, one very basic, very, very basic layer of, of detail there, starting, starting to work. And between these details here, I'm going to use nearly a dry brush, so it's a semi-dry brush. And what I mean by that is, you know when you're doing your painting, you think, oh, I need to reload it. 
That's what I mean. That's when I class it as being a semi-dry brush. And that will then give you the finest, the very finest of marks, barely touching the paper at the same time. And you can see the way this is gradually, I'm running out of paint completely now, gradually, gradually building up. So you load your brush, just like this here, look. So I'm gonna roll it, I'm gonna, well, load it. That's what I say to my members. Load it, roll it, and pull away. Then get some tissue paper, and then tap it just once on there to take in a residual paint off. That way, it's not too overloaded. Okay, a little bit more now. Gradually building as I go. I'm gonna put the, the um, darker accents in there as well, darker lines. Just touching the edge of this leg. I'm sure the butterfly doesn't mind if I'm touching the ed edge of its leg. I'm sure it doesn't. And a few down here for now. We'll, we'll be lightening this with some watercolor white as well. I wanna show you this one section if I can before I go today. Oh, and can I ask you to do one thing for me as well, if you don't mind, if you're enjoying this video, is to click on, um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to it, okay? So subscribe and click on that bell icon. So after you click on that subscribe button down below, click on the bell icon that appears by the side of it. That means that when I go live or I release another video, then you'll be notified, you'll, you'll be told, so Paul's on live, Paul's online now, you know, don't miss him. Or Paul's released another video, so at least then you'll know if there's anything new. Uh, or when there is something new, I try to get something out there every week if I can. So gradually building up this texture. With a semi-dry brush again, I'm gonna go down there now. Little tip as well, you know when your brush is just about to run out of paint and you're about to reload it again, like you're going on about? That's when you wanna to go to the lightest of areas because that means you're gonna get the finest of marks. <laughs> just like that, okay. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that gambo yellow a minute because I'm just not quite happy enough with the brightness of this side. A bit too much on the brush there, one second. So gambo yellow. Now when you're mixing your paints, by the way, don't do this. If I just get my palette, don't do it this way. Have you noticed what I'm doing wrong there? Nope. I'm using my detail brush. Now, your detail brush, these only cost about three pounds, so they're not expensive. What's that, about four and a half dollars? Four dollars, something like that, isn't it? Um, so they're not expensive to buy, but even so, you don't want to ruin them by keep mixing your paint with it, you know, in your half pounds. Make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that you use an old brush, a very old brush. This used to be a very pointed brush many, many years ago. I've had this for quite a lot of years. Um, just to do all the mixing work with. That way, you preserve your your brushes. You really will. You'll make them last that little bit longer. Actually, much longer, probably. So I'm going to add this gambo yellow just into the top here, actually, just to tickle that in. Just to brighten that area a little bit more. That's a little bit better. Just a touch more. And the good thing about all these details we're adding on, we can soften those down as well. You know, which is really good. So you can really soften them down, soften them back. Okay, now then, I'm gonna go for that darker color. So I'm gonna go for a little bit, leaf green, hooker's green, and burnt umber. And if I just get a little more drop of water in there, this is one of those pipettes, by the way, or pipettes, pipettes. These cost about, let's put a bit in there. These cost about, um, oh, about 20 pence each. So really, 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 really cheap to buy. So you can buy like a pack of five of those, for example, or a pack of ten. So they last quite a while. Okay. Now with this colour, again, to a milky consistency, I'm going to go in and start to look at the slightly darker lines I can see in there. For example, around here. Barely touching that paper, remember? Barely touching. And this is where you can start to build up some of those little tiny marks within that leaf. Now you've got the vein coming down there. That's just, no, I don't want it too defined, but it, you know, it's, it's definitely there. 
if I can do the section review today, then that'll give us some ideas on how to kind of put a leaf together for the detail work. Just working on one section now. The rest of these, as I mentioned, I do off camera, but but for now, we just work on this. There, I'm just going to put a little bit there. I've got to lift that paint off. Yeah, I know. Tiny, tiny marks. I'm trying to see where that goes there. Now I tend to work off a tablet as well. Not paracetamol, no, 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 not that kind of tablet. But it's a, it's a tablet, uh, which I work, so you can either use an iPad, a tablet, a smartphone, your, your mobile phone, your, your cell. Uh, so you can use whatever you want really to kind of view the image. It's better to do it, to kind of view it on a tablet because you can pinch into that reference photo, can't you? Which is the way I tend to work. Whereas if you print off the photograph, the problem with that, one, you got to print off various amounts of them because you've got to print them off at different sizes so you can see the, de the detail better. And also, you know, you might find, well, you will find that the colour of the printout will not be quite nice, the same as you see it on the, um, on the screen on the tablet or on the computer screen. So, you know, printing it off will only print off to the quality of the, pa uh, the inks that you've got within your printer. And also, the, the, you know, the paper will make a big difference for your printer as well. So if you've got um, basic normal printing paper, you find the colours for that will not stand out. Okay, so it won't stand out to the clarity that you need to kind of see the colours correctly. So working off a tablet, a smartphone, an iPad, anything like that, um, is fine. You know, the Kindle Fire, we know all those, don't we? So I just lifted a little bit of paint off there, as you can see. And I think what I might do, I'm just going to put a little bit more just into that little top section because it's left alone. It's all on its own up there. A bit more yellow in there. There you go. Don't leave that one out, do we? And a little bit more. <laughs> and again. Okay. Now, at this stage, what we can do, we can add even more darker accents in if we want to. We can go over these lines with a brighter colour and really pick out the details. And how much detail you want to put on there is entirely your choice when you're working on anything like this. Just what I say to people on a regular basis on my videos is that you know you don't have to go to the detail I use. And you know, even when it's not a video, sometimes I'll go even more detail than I normally do. So the wolf painting, which I've done, that was one that's tucked away, I think, at the moment. But the wolf painting, which I've done um, last, well, a couple of weeks ago, actually, because that's going to be the next video tutorial on my website, you know, devonartist.co.uk. Bear with me a minute while I'm talking to you. I'm going to go to my folder and see if I can find it for you, so I can just show you the one I mean. I'll be back in a minute, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still talking to you. which is, okay, you ready? It's coming out the folder. Now the wolf painting, if I just go back to the um, other screen a minute so you can just see what, the, what, what I mean by this, which is this one here, I've just finished, okay? Now that particular one is gonna be next month's video tutorial on my website, devonartist.co.uk, and also on Patreon as well. So if you want to pop along that, then that will be there next month. From the second of the month, um, part one is on Patreon, and all the parts, parts one through to five, will be on my website, Devon Artist. So just give us some general idea of what that is. What's that noise? That was me. Okay, back to it. Okay. So just worth mentioning that as well. So if you fancy painting a wolf, then now you know about it and what to do. Okay. Right, so what else we got there? So, uh, Ellen, listen to a speech from our king now on TV. Sorry. Oh, you, yep, can't blame you. That's fine. All right, you take care over there, okay? Right, so just carrying on on this one. Thank you for watching, by the way, Aaron. Now, what I want to do is add some watercolour white. Now, the watercolour white... I tend to use one which is done by SAA, which is that one there, okay? But there's a variety of different whites on the market. All I suggest to you 
for, for when you buy white paint is get one that's um, opaque. It's got to definitely be opaque because if it's semi-opaque, you'll find it will not cover properly. If it's semi-transparent, it won't cover properly. <laughs> um, so test some different ones out if you get a chance. If you've got friends who's got watercolor white in a tube or white gouache, which works just as well, um, then it's worth trying it out on some scrap paper first. So we get some paint on some paper like this look from my test papers like that. There's some cling film idea, look, that's good enough. Um, <laughs> and try out some different ideas on that, which is basically what I've done as I shown you earlier on with this here. And that is that white paint. So watercolor white is useful, very useful. And I do use it a lot for a variety of things, especially for highlights as well, especially for like the wolf as well. I paint, I use that for the wolf itself. So we're going to mix this to a creamy consistency, just initially. Load it, roll it, and pull away. Give it a tap, you know the system now. Then I'll come in and start thinking about where I want the highlights to go on this leaf. I'm going to very lightly, very lightly, scumble. And all scumbling is, if you've never done that, is just doing lots of little patterns using the side of the brush, moving it around randomly, in no particular kind of specific order really, leaving gaps in between with a watercolor white. There we go, a bit richer. And if you find it's too bright, we can tone it down once it's dry as well. Because the thing with white paints as well, especially watercolor white, is that you can add color over the top but you have to do it in one go, so one fell swoop. Otherwise, you're just blurring that watercolor white as well. The same will apply if you use white gouache. So bear that in mind. There's a bit of a line going up there I can see, so I'm gonna sort of, like a staggered line really, sort of replicate that a little bit. So this is a process I go through when I'm working on Bit of botanical work, anything like this. Just very lightly touching the paper. And you find as well, if you've got too much water within your white paint, which is fine if you have, then it will dry that little bit duller. So it won't be quite as bright. So if there's too much water, it will dry duller. My little tip too, if you want to keep it creamy, is have it so basically what I mean by that. Let me just show you one of, an example there. If you can paint a line in one go without that line breaking and it stays nice and white, then you got it about right, okay? Little tip for you. If it breaks too early and doesn't continue that line, then it's not probably, it's, it's probably too thick. So it tickles. Little scumbles, barely touching that paper again. And this is going to give you some general idea on how I do this. So I hope you enjoyed this today. I know I have. And it's good of you to sit there watching and watching me paint and yapping away. <laughs> All the way down to the bottom there. And I need to do the same with the rest of these sides as well. As I say, that's giving some general idea on how I go about adding this in. Oh, I was going to say about if you want to go over the white, you can do. Best wait till it dries first, so if you do that. And a little bit more down there, and down there. There we go. Okay. Just thin that out a little bit as well. Right, okay. Now if I wanted to tone that down a little bit, say for example this area here which is just about dry already, I can see these warm lights here, I can add a colour over the top of that. So if I get some of that gambo yellow to a watery consistency, I've not overloaded the brush, I can in one go go over the top of that area and it puts a hint of colour within that watercolour white. So I'll put the white on the paper first, then I'll get the colour once it's dry and very lightly go over the top in one go. Barely touching the paper though. You don't want to move that white paint. Got the idea? Okay, right, uh, last minute question from Charlene Snyder. Hello Charlene. 
Do you get the wolf on the first level? On the first level, if you go to... It depends on which level do you mean, Charlie. And you're on about Patreon or my own personal website. If you go to devonartist.co.uk, when you join on a monthly subscription, you'll get the wolf on... In fact, you'll get everything. And I mean everything that I've got on there. There's over 50 videos which you get for the monthly subscription. You have to work out what that equates to within... Um, your money your monetary terms as well but have a look at that anyway because here it's 12 pounds a month so i don't know what that is in in dollars in canadian dollars so you have to double check that but go to devinartist.co.uk that link at the top there you, you know what i mean there I'll, I'll put the link down below as well in fact i think i already have um so have a look at that if you go to patreon patreon.com forward slash the devon artist okay then you find me on there so patreon.com the devon artist <laughs> Um, and you find on there it's not a problem at all. You can do it that way around as well. So, one second. I just noticed my battery was running low on my computer there while I'm talking to you there. That was close. So if you do it that way around as well, that's fine. Um, but if you go to my website first, join up as a free member on the devonartist.co.uk website up there. And you'll see two video tutorials you can have a play with first. To, to make it, you know, if it, then you can work out if it's what you want to do as well before you actually pay any money out okay right other than that i'm going to say goodbye so that's giving some idea on how i would go about painting the leaf and what i'd probably do off camera as well once it's nice and dry just very lightly fine tune this a little bit more or i can just sit relax put the radio on and uh, just chill out okay so i'm going to say goodbye for now but thank you very very much for um, or patreon yeah go to patreon and go on the ten dollar level tier then you get access to this next month as well. As everything, again, like I just mentioned on Patreon, the 50 plus videos, which I've already produced, and the short tips and tricks videos as well, all for the $10 a month. You get all that on Patreon for $10 a month. Um, if you join at the $16 level, you'll get access over to everything on Patreon. I've got the same videos on my website, as I mentioned, devonarsa.co.uk. But the benefit through being on my personal website as well as because you get access to that if you're on the $16 level um, both patreon and my website is that you get access to that but also the navigation is much much easier when you're on my website to try and find things okay <laughs> rather than on patreon so uh, give us some general ideas on what you can do so yeah $10 on patreon would be fine and you get access to all the videos okay right I think I've explained that clear enough I hope if not this is clear as mud Right, okay, so I'm going to say goodbye, and I'll try and go live another, another week as well, and it could be a different project next time round, because I'll work on this off camera now, now seeing what you've got to do, and uh, let's see what we can do next time around. So until then, I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs> I'll need to upgrade. There you go, Charlene. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Then you get to my website as well if you upgrade to the $16, okay? So not a problem at all. Right, I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you again for joining me today. And until next time around... I'm going to say bye-bye for now. Now one of the painters I've been wanting to do for quite a while now is to paint a horse chestnut bud. So this is going to be quite a lot of texture, a lot of colour involved with this. Also quite a bit of detail as well. So I'm going to go through a variety of techniques along the way from wet and wet, dry brush, lifting off, using watercolour white and one thing we will not be using this time around is black. I know, makes a change. So no black paint, no lamp black or anything like that. And don't forget, this is also real-time video, so I talk as I paint, explaining every single thing I do as I go. So here's a little preview video for you on how to paint a horse chestnut bud.
Right, so there you go. So I'll give you some ideas on how to paint a horse chestnut bud. So, we'll find a little bit of that me time and let's get them brushes wet. And let's paint wildlife in watercolour on devonartist.co.uk.